Now let's talk more about equations for pH and concentration of H+. There are two main equations, uh, one of which we've already seen, which is that the pH is the negative log of the concentration of H+. The other one is that the concentration of H+, plus equals 10 to the minus pH. And again, we've seen this equation from earlier in this lecture outline. We've seen an equation sort of similar to this when we were talking about uh, the data for taste and taste sensitivity. And it turns out these two are opposites, or one cancels the other. So um, log and 10 to the are opposites. Now, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to do an example. And we're going to say, well, let's suppose that the concentration of H plus is 6.2 times 10 to the minus 7. Molarity of H plus. First question we're going to ask is, what is the pH? And the pH is going to be equal to the negative log of this number here, just like we did before, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 7. And if we do that, 6.2 times 10 to the is the exponent, or on some people's calculators, the EE button, 7 minus, and then I hit log, and I get, and I take away the minus sign, I get 6.21 for my pH. pH has no units, by the way. Frustrating for me, but I'm working on it in therapy. So, but now, if this is my pH, 6.21, and then I ask, what is the concentration of H plus for that? That means I have to plug it into this equation here. It'll be 10 to the minus 6.21, let me show you how I plug that into the calculator. It's going to be 6.21. On my calculator, I have to write the numbers first. I have to put in the minus sign. And then I'm going to hit shift to get to 10 to the... Oop. Let's try that again. 6.21 minus shift. There we go. And I get 6.17 times 10 to the minus seven, and that's because I cut off some extra decimals there. If I hadn't, uh, I would get this same number here as well. So that's a little bit about how you work with both of these, how you enter them into the calculator, and uh, how also the fact that these two equations are sort of opposites. Uh, this one turns hydrogen ion concentration into pH. This one turns pH into hydrogen ion concentration. Now, um, now let's talk about what's on the bottom of this page now. So um, we've been dealing a lot with these concentrations and with pHs, um, but let's talk a little more about them. So uh, first off, if you look at these concentrations of hydrogen ions, they're all small. They're all smaller than 1. So, uh, well, 10 to the minus 0 is 1, but you almost never see a pH that low. So this is going to be pH of 1, which is 0 0.1 molarity, 0 0.2. We make it all the way over here to 10 to the minus 7, which would be 0 0.00000001 molarity. And it turns out that a pH of 7 is considered neutral. And if you have a pH less than 7, it's going to be acidic, meaning have acid properties. And if you have a pH greater than 7, so let's see, less than 7 is acidic, pH greater than 7 is basic, and as you get farther and farther along here, you get more and more acidic. You get more and more H pluses. I know these are negative numbers, but 
10 to the minus 1 is a bigger number than 10 to the minus 2. So now let's talk about an example where the pH changes from 6 to 4. From pH equals 6 to pH equals 4. Oh, I think now that I have the writing on it, it all stays. We'll see. Um, so we're going to start here. And we're going to move from pH 6 to pH 4. My question is, what happens to the concentration of H plus? So how does concentration of H plus change? And so let's start. We start here, 10 to the minus 6. We move over to 10 to the minus 4. So as the pH changes from 6 to 4, the concentration of H plus increases. Concentration of H plus increases. I know, the pH is decreasing, but they're really negative exponents, so we'll work on it. Um, and when it goes from 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the minus 4, that's a change of 100 times. That's a change of 10 to the 2. So, all right, that's the difference in exponents or 100. So the concentration of H plus increases 100 times for a pH change of 2. So it doesn't sound like very much the pH change 2. However, the concentration of your hydrogen ions changed 100 times. Wow. Uh, and in fact, if uh, you look at the previous pages here, where it talks about human blood having a pH of 7.3 or 7.4. Slightly basic. There are lots of reasons for that too, which we won't talk about, though you can ask. Um, how, if your pH changes just down to 7, you die. Right? So there, And there's huge mechanisms in our body to prevent that from happening, thank goodness. But a pH change of 0.4... Well, we won't be asked to do this, but let's do it anyway. 0.4, 2.5 times as many hydrogen ions. That's enough hydrogen ions to kill you for sure. Anyway, more than enough. Let's stop there. And let's move on to the next topic, rates. And the first thing I want to cover about rates is rates in general. So not rates that we will deal with when we talk about coffee or or science even. And the first one I want to talk about is a rate of travel. And please do put a little smiley face next to the letter E here on this page. And a rate of travel is going to be, well, let's just give an example. Stay focused. Um, 55 miles per hour, what we might call 55 MPH. That's a rate of travel. And what it does is it says that in one hour, right, per means divide by in math, 55 miles per one hour is, uh, as far as a rate go, is you're going to change position by 55 miles and you're going to change time by one hour. If you go the full hour, we all know that you can go 55 miles an hour for five minutes if you want. Uh, you don't have to go the full hour. But if you did, you would change your position by 55 miles. Um, so what I want to do is now broaden this and just say that any rate, and we're going to rate of reaction, but there are lots of rates. Um, 
What is the rate at which you drink coffee? One time per day. There's that time thing again. Um, and any rate is going to be a change in blank divided by a change in time. And this is what we're going to see when we talk about chemistry rates as well. Um, you can have rates such as, um, oh, I don't know. So one that comes up for me is, so what is the rate at which you walk the dog? And I, um, I change my, well, let's see, how does it work here? Uh, I will walk the dog 14 walks per one week. So at the beginning of the week, I had uh, zero walks. And at the end of the week, I'd done 14 walks. That's a change in uh, walks. So that's 14 walks per one week. And it introduces the idea that you've got both a starting point and an ending point. And so a rate is going to have a final amount or a final position or a final something. And typically in all rates, including scientific rates, but also non-scientific rates, you'll have an initial amount or an initial position. And we always do final minus initial because that's where you end up. You're usually interested in where you're going to end up with these things. So you also have a final time and you have an initial time. And that is how you can calculate a rate. Um, what else do we have to say? I think that's most of what we have to say about rates in general. Um, and so let's move on. Now, the specific rate we're going to talk about in, uh, with regards to what we're talking about now is going to be what's called the rate of acidification of coffee. And let me find that. Yep, and the rate of acidification of coffee, so one, the rate of acidification of coffee is going to equal the change in the concentration of hydrogen ions. over the change in time. And again, so just sort of slowly but surely taking this out. Um, so there's also a word for change or a symbol that we use, and that's the capital Greek letter delta. It looks like a triangle. So we can abbreviate this delta H plus. This means change in concentration of H plus over change in time. And it's going to equal the concentration of H plus final minus the concentration of, or of H plus initial over time final minus time initial. And what I'm searching for is the example that I had uh, prepared for this. There we go. And let's suppose that the data you had for an example was at 0 and 10 minutes. You had pH of 5.06 at 0 minutes and 4.76 at 10 minutes. And the question is, what is the rate of acidification of the coffee? And this is what you'll find. You'll find that as time goes on, or, well, we'll do the experiment, but I don't want to give too much away. Spoiler alert. The coffee generally is found 
to have its pH decrease. As we talked about, a decrease in pH is an increase in concentration of hydrogen ions. And so that's why it's called rate of acidification because it is getting more acidic, having more hydrogen ions. All right, so now let's plug these numbers in. We have pH, but we don't have concentration of H+. Plus. So let me make a concentration of H plus line here and we'll do our calculation over here. Our equation, remember, is that concentration of H plus equals 10 to the minus pH. So if I put in 5.06 minus and then I hit my 10 to the X button, I get 8.71 times 10 to the minus 6. And that's just a little squiggle in there. For 4.76, shift 10 to the, I get 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5th. And these are molarities. And you can see that here with a negative 5, 10 to the minus 5 is a larger number than 10 to the minus 6. All right, it's getting a little crowded here. So rate is going to equal my final one right here, 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5th molarity minus my initial one. 8.71 times 10 to the minus 6th divided by 10 minutes minus 0 minutes and we can multiply this all out I've got these numbers on top I'm going to do the subtraction totally and get an answer and then divide by 10 I got 1.74 times 10 to the 5 minus. Now I have to subtract, so I'm going to hit the actual minus key. 8.71 times 10 to the 6 minus. I get 8.69 times 10 to the minus 6th. Molarity, molarity. Over 10 minutes. And now we'll just divide these two numbers, so divide by 10. 8.69 times 10 to the minus 7. This is molarity per minute. And a couple things going on here. First off, we have just proved that our coffee is getting more acidic. You'll see in the activity that the result of this getting more acidic is if you heat your coffee in a Mr. Coffee machine or similar or uh, there's also the option to heat the coffee in a pot, a covered pot on a stove or on a hot plate. But if you continue to heat coffee, like so many places do, it continues to get more acidic. And uh, we might be able to taste that. Certainly one of the tastes we're going for is acidic tastes. Now, oh, the last page is just more room for calcs. And I'm sorry, I should have told you that there's no more calcs for this. But you will be doing a rate calculation for uh, three different points in the lab. So the beginning, the middle, and the end. You'll be making some graphs, uh, something we've already done and will continue to do as we go through.